Hello, welcome to Coding with Indy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a knob control widget completely in Flutter, Canvas, and without any third party packages. This is useful for things like setting volume, brightness, or any other range of values. Recently, I was uh, pretty busy with my app, Local, which shows the fasting durations and zones in a radial dial. That was a lot of work to get right. Good thing is I was able to distill that knowledge into this video. By the way, if you are into intermittent fasting, check out my free app on App Store. Link in the description. Uh, this widget is somewhat similar to the tape measure widget I did previously. But being this at radial control, a bit of algebra is necessary to map coordinates to angles. The design for this widget and video was inspired by these two pages on Dribble. Thank you Mick Skuza and Yu Hang. You've seen many times how to create a blank uh, Flutter project, so I'm just going to jump into the code this time. To show how to use knob control like this, I've made a couple of widgets like the LCD display and the horizontal progress bar. I will release the code in my Gumroad, check the description for the link. Okay, let's take a look at the main dart file. Just to get things set up, I have a container with a gradient background attached to the scaffold object. Light control widget is a stateful widget that uses knob widget. I created that to show how the knob widget can be used. In there we have column which hosts the display widget and the knob widget. Display widget is the LCD like display you see at the top. Uh, it's just a couple of nested containers with some fancy styling. Knob widget is wrapped inside a sized box so it gets the desired size. Now let's look at the API for the knob widget. We are passing in the initial value, min max, and the step and unit parameters. Also a callback function so we can make use of this new value. This is very similar to the tape measure widget I created a couple of videos ago. We use the value return to set the brightness variable. Because in this example, I'm using this knob uh, to control brightness. You could use for anything you fancy, it's just a value. Also note that display widget has the brightness parameter, so it gets updated when we update the brightness variable. Okay, let's take a look at the knob widget. It is a stateful widget because we handle the gestures and update the value. On the init state, we get the passed in initial value and set it to the value variable. This gives the knob indicator uh, the initial value to be drawn. Just as always, knob is implemented as a custom painter object. I pass in the value, min, max, step, and unit into the painter class. Also, we pass in two other values, min angle and max angle. These two angles define where the min value and the max value would, be, would sit on the circle. We have min on the left and max on the right, but the canvas coordinate system has the angle measured clockwise from 3 o'clock position so the max angle is at 45 degrees and mean will sit at 135 degrees. We will come back to the judge detector later on. Right now let's just look at how to draw the widget. Knob painter is where all the action is. Let's look at the paint function where I have several functions to achieve different stages of painting. We compute the rectangle center and the radius from the passed in size parameter. These values are needed for the rest of the functions as arguments. First we draw the dial. Dial is the outermost circle. It has a thick border. First we draw the thick circle with a linear gradient. This gives the skeuomorphic look. I have set the thickness to 20 to mimic the light from above. We have two colors one light and one dark, which gives the circle a light to dark gradient from top to bottom. Then we draw another very thin circle around the previous one with a slight offset. This adds to the realism. 
Now we draw the min and max guide labels. They are slightly different from the rest of the markers we have, so we do this separately. This is actually really easy. We draw two lines and then draw the labels. We know what our max and min angles are. They are passed in as degrees. For all our trigonometry, we need angles in radians. So we compute them by simply multiplying by pi and dividing by 180. With the angle and the radius given, we can compute the Cartesian coordinates simply by using this formula. If you have seen my previous videos, this is the same as converting a polar coordinate to a Cartesian coordinate. <coughs> polar coordinate system defines a point with two values, an angle and a distance. When we have the Cartesian coordinates, we can use that to draw two lines from the center. Then we want to draw two labels further away from the center. That's what's happening here. From previous videos, you may recognize this draw text centered function. Uh, I'm not going to describe it in detail here, but it simply, it simply draws the text centered on a given point. Okay, fantastic. You may be wondering what about those ugly looking lines coming out of the center, but fear not, they will be hidden by what we draw on top next. Back in the paint function, next is to draw scales. Let's go look at that function. Simply, this is very similar to the previous function, but we draw a lot more lines and they are of different lengths depending on the angle. Again, we compute the min and max angles, but this time we'd want to add two times pi to the max angle, so we are computing a range. Since the angles roll over when they go past the origin, we can do this. The main aim of this is to compute the radians per step. Remember, step is a parameter we have passed into the widget. This defines the minimum marker distance in the scale. Then we iterate from min angle to max angle by step angle at a time. Just as before, we compute the Cartesian coordinate from the angle and radius and use that to draw a line from the center. But this time, each 10th, 5th and 1st line will have different lengths from the longest to shortest. We use a counter variable called i for this bit. Right now it looks like a broken, <laughs> broken cycle wheel, but it will get better, I promise. Back in the paint function, we have draw knob function next. This is the middle bit. We want to have a reduced radius for this, and it is computed by simply subtracting half the thickness from the full radius. Just as for the dial, we draw a linear gradient. This gives us a light to dark effect from top to bottom. And then we draw a thin border around it with a small offset. This gives a nice gap effect between the knob and the dial. Simple enough, and we head back to the paint method again. Next up is the draw knob effects. This is a subtle one. The aim of this function is to draw another circle inside the knob, but for the illuminated arc which shows the level as we turn the knob. This part comes later, but we are laying the groundwork for this now. Here we draw a circle with another linear gradient, but this time from dark to light. This gives the effect of a sunken track. So easy, so let's head back to the paint method to see what's left to do. Okay, the last piece of this puzzle is to draw indicators. This would give the effect of an LED dot and a curved LED track. And the indicators are to show what the current value is in different forms. For this, just as we did for drawing scale, we need to compute a range and angles per unit of value. So we do the old trick of adding 2pi for the max angle after converting to radians. 
then we compute the angle range and then the ratio angles per unit. With that, we can compute what the angle should be for the current value. First, we draw the dot with the angle and radius we have computed here. We can easily get the coordinates for the dot. So remember the D is the distance from the center. So when we draw the dot, we need to add that to the rect center. With that done, let's see how we can draw the arc. This is not hard. We already have the angles necessary. Draw arc requires a rect as a parameter. Since we drew the background track previously in the knob effects function, it should be the same rect. We have the min angle as the start angle, then the sector given by angle R as the sweep angle and the paint. We'll look at various paint variables are used for this in a bit. The glow effect comes from the special paint object I created. Let's take a look. Indicator arc paint blur paint object is stroke styled but with a mask filter set. Mask filter dot blur takes two arguments, the blur style and a sigma value, which controls the width of the blur. There are multiple styles you can use, but for our use, solid inside and fuzzy outside is exactly what we want. Okay, so that finishes off the drawing for the knob. Next, we need to implement the interactions. For that, we head back to the knob widget. So we have the knob painter here wrapped inside a gesture detector. We use the on horizontal drag update of it to get the drag position. But in order to compute the angle of the finger position relative to the knob, we need to know the dimensions of the knob widget. To get that, we need to wrap all this inside a layout builder. Constraints parameter gives us the size of the widget. And with that, we call the compute value from thumb function. First, we convert the thumb position to a polar coordinate. For this, uh, I found a little piece of code written by Tim Sneed. He's a prominent figure in the Flutter community. So I trust him on this and it looks correct. I return the angle in an offset object. So here I'm extracting it from dy field. Now we need to do some adjustments to this theta value. This is because our min and max angle range is different from what the Flutter coordinate system provides. So theta angle is uh, between zero and 90 degrees. We add a two pi so that the range is continuous. Otherwise we get a sudden jump when we turn the knob. Then we do clamping to max angle and min angle. So the values can't go below or above those values. Then we compute the angle range and the ratio units per angle. With that, we can compute what the current value is. Excellent. Let's get back to the gesture detector handler. We here, we do the additional clamping to the min and max values. This is probably not necessary, but since I have it already, I will leave it. Now that we have computed the new values from the finger position on the screen, we call the on change callback to notify the parent of this widget. And also, since this is inside a set state, it redraws the knob. All right, folks, that is it for this video. This video took an entire two days deep focus to get done. <laughs> I sure hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. Thanks for watching it. And if you have questions, please ask in the comments section. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe to the channel. Usually I don't release code, but as an experiment, I started to bundle the code along with the transcript as merch on my Gumroad page. It is priced at pay what you like. I want to see how much demand there is for such an offering. Anyway, tune in next time for another Flutter Canvas related video. Bye for now.